It's Dr. Joe. Today's video, we're going to go over a topic that comes up every day in my office and has been coming up every day in my office for the last 34 years. People ask me about how to fix it, how to prevent it. What are we talking about? We're talking about the dreaded hump in the upper back, the hunchback look, you know, where the upper back is rounded forward. Usually the head is forward, the shoulders are forward, and adults fear this more than anything else I think they no one wants that look no one wants that old person look so we're gonna go over today what you can do to fix it okay so before we get into today's material I got a couple of announcements one is we have a new thing on the channel we have a um, right below the video see there's a little button I think it says join and we're doing some private content on a monthly you know people can sign up there's just one level it's $9.99 a month and you will have access to live chats that are just for the group that I'll be doing live chats. You'll have early access to videos. You'll get to view videos before they go public. We're gonna do a whole bunch of just special content for that group. We're calling it uh, Friends of Okra Med Health, okay? So anyways, check that out when you have a chance. It really helps support the channel and keeps me uh, able to make videos as much as I enjoy doing it, okay? Also, if you haven't done so, visit the website, okramedhealth.com. We have a full line of fascia release products. Everything is in stock, ready to ship out. Trying to get to 100,000 subscribers, so I'd really, really, really appreciate it. If you just take a second right now, subscribe to my channel, Okra Med Health on YouTube. Click that little bell notification. It notifies you every time I upload a new video. And if you enjoy the content today, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. Done with the announcements. Let's get right to the material. Okay, so let's just talk real quick about that back hump, that rounding of the upper back that nobody wants. It's, I mean, it's just a, it's an important topic because when you get to 45, 50, 55, that's the age you start becoming really, really conscious of this stuff because you start noticing friends of yours that are starting to have it or family members, you know, hey, Uncle Johnny, he's really bent over, right? You know, or, or I can't believe I graduated high school with this guy and, and, and he's all hunched over now, you know, and it, it freaks people out, right? So... Let's talk a little bit of what's going on. We're going to talk about what's causing it, and that way we can we can fix it today. Okay, when dealing with an area in the back, it's really the thoracic spine. I would say is the main culprit. The, the thoracic spine is the part of the spine that you have your cervical spine, which is your neck, your lumbar spine down here, which is your lower back, which are both curving the same way. Thoracic spine is going the opposite way, and this is the part of the spine that tends to start bending over creating that rounded hump look to the back. And as that's happening, as you can see, that starts making the head go forward. Oftentimes the shoulders are forward. This is all part of the, the, the problem, is that you're creating this poor posture situation where a lot of times people with this problem or starting to develop this problem have severe tightness on all the musculature in the front, which is dragging everything forward, severe weakness on all the musculature in the back. So if we got weakness back here, tightness back here, can we just fix one and not the other? Of course not, we're gonna to need to work on both aspects of this. And that's where people miss the big picture on this, is they just start working on, say, strengthening those back muscles. Well, you can strengthen them all you want, but if you're all locked up in the front, it's not gonna make much of a change in, in, in fixing this problem or, or really, let's say, we wanna prevent this problem. So this is something I want, you know, everyone should be doing these things because it's something that we don't even wanna start with developing this problem because once you start noticing it and, the, and you have the hump and you have that hump look, it makes it very, very difficult and a long process to really start fixing it, you know? So we wanna just, you know, nip this thing in the bud we want to get this, we want to just start working on the tight muscles, the weak muscles, and get this thing resolved, okay? So you're going to be a little surprised at some of the stuff that we're going to need to do to fix it, because like I said, we're going to look at it from the full picture from both sides, but let's get right to it. So let's get started dealing with the tight muscles in the front, okay? So these are the muscles that are creating that, the, the shoulders coming forward, the head coming forward. These are muscles that are, that are building up, that have built up adhesion, tightness, scar tissue in there that's causing this problem, keeping the shoulders forward, keeping the head forward, okay? So we need to loosen up that tissue. We need to break up those adhesions. We're dealing with 
Some specific stuff here. In, the, in this area, we're dealing with a couple muscles, the pec minor and the pec major. These are muscles that get tight, pull the shoulders forward and the neck. We're gonna focus in on what's known as the SCM, the sternocleidomastoid muscles up in here. That help, that adds to the neck coming forward. This is all important stuff because you have to understand that restriction in here, I mean, not only is it causing or will cause the back to, to hunch around, round forward and cause a hunchback, but when this is all restricted, this is stuff that's gonna affect you working out in the gym. I mean, this is gonna to lead to problems, lead to injuries. You're trying to do chest work, shoulder work, and you're all restricted going forward. It's an injury waiting to happen. So this is super important stuff, okay? We wanna we want to work this stuff. We wanna keep this area of the body loose. It gets tight and it tends, unfortunately it gets tight, tighter as we get older, okay? We do more sitting, we're less, act, we're less active. So. I'm going to be using some different things in here today. I'm using a spiky massage ball from Okra Med Health. This is a max size ball. Very effective for breaking up adhesions. We're going to do some warm-up work. This is a, a double roller uh, that we have at Okra Med Health. Again, to generate blood flow. You don't have something like that. You really, if, you, if you're concerned about this problem, I would get some, some specific tools like this. It's so much more effective. If not, use your fist today. Uh, everything I show you, use your fist. You can use a tennis ball, a cross ball, do the best you can, okay? I just want everyone to get better. I don't want you to buy products from me, I want you to get better. I'm just telling you what works best, all right? So anyways, first, let's work on these, these muscles. We got the, the pec minor, which is a small muscle that's coming off the upper front part of the shoulder blade, actually from this area, and coming down into the third, fourth, and fifth ribs. We got the pec major, obviously a large muscle that uh, is attached to the sternum, the clavicle that comes all the way out and attaches into the humerus on each side. Large muscle that only, not only when these, um, the pec minor when it gets tight, rolls that shoulder forward and down. Pec major rolls the shoulders forward and actually internally rotates the shoulders. So it creates that, that, that tightness that just adds to the problem back here. Before we do myofascial release work, let's get some blood flowing. We gotta get blood flowing into the tissue. So I'm gonna take just a couple minutes. I'm gonna go over the pec major, the pec minor, I'm gonna go right over the front of the shoulder, go into the sternum area, get underneath the collarbone the best you can, go on both sides, and we're starting with this area, okay? So get some blood flow. Doesn't matter which direction, it's just firm pressure. This is not the actual myofascial release work. This is just the warm up. We have to get blood flowing to make the myofascial release work that we're about to do more effective, okay? So a couple minutes of just rolling around, use your fist, whatever you have to do. Let's release the pec minor first. The pec minor, when it gets tight, builds up adhesions, causes the shoulder to go forward and down. We're gonna pin and stretch it. We're gonna trap the tissue with the spiky massage ball. We're gonna pin it, then we're gonna elongate the tissue, and which means we're gonna uh, lengthen the tissue. It's gonna help pull apart adhesions. How are we gonna do that? I'm right in here on my pec minor. I take the ball, I push in, and I just put some light traction down. So I pin the tissue, push in, pull down. Now I'm gonna take my shoulder, I'm gonna sh shrug it up and roll it back in a nice, slow, controlled manner. I'm not trying to rush it. So pin, pull, shrug up, and roll back. Do this about half a dozen times, six times and then take the ball and move it. Move it in a little different spot. You know, the pec minor is not a very big muscle, so we may need to move it two or three times, but move it around a little bit. Maybe you feel the knot. You might find that knot right here that feels very restricted. Concentrate on it. Maybe instead of doing it six times, do it 10 times on the actual knot that you feel. Push in, pull down, shrug up, roll back about six times. Two, three spots, two, three spots. It's gonna help loosen up the pec minor. This is not stuff that's happening in one day. This is some stuff that we're working on a consistent basis. We're, we're, we're gonna be working on it. If it's really a bad issue here, we're gonna work on it daily. If it's something more preventative, maybe three times a week we're gonna work on it, okay? So that's, that's for, for pec minor. Now pec major, the issue with it is the shoulders are coming forward and it internally rotates the shoulders also. I mean, these are muscles that get tight and get actually more tight on adults because they, from uh, one of the major problems when you sit is your pec muscles get tight. So this is stuff that needs some work. So pec major, we're gonna hit you know, a larger area in here, all right? So let's work different spots. What we're gonna do on this for the pec major is I'm going to bring my arm across, 
internally rotate the, the, the shoulder at the same time and bring it across, try to relax the muscle. Now I'm gonna push into the pec major here and I'm gonna kind of pull across towards my sternum. So I'm trapping the tissue. So I'm pushing in and pulling across, my shoulders kind of across and my shoulders internally rotated. From this position like this, I'm going to bring my arm out and as I come out, I'm gonna externally rotate my arm out as far as I can and go until I can't stretch it back anymore. Hold it for a second and then come all the way back. Bring it across and as I'm coming across, externally rotate that shoulder and come across. Do that about six times, then come back. Now let's move the ball. I'm gonna move it to a different spot of the pec major. Push in, pull across the tissue like that, all right? Again, across, stretch it, and externally rotate. If you have a tight pec major, this is not a lot of fun. I mean, you're gonna feel it. This is stuff that you're gonna feel and, and expect to feel it. And we're gonna do six times. So we're gonna move it into multiple locations. Remember, the pec major is attached into the sternum here. So you're gonna do some, some pressing in here and holding along here. Then get up in here, it's right underneath the clavicle. So do some uh, pull, uh, push in and pull across up in this area and then come into the kind of the belly of the muscle. So we're gonna be doing more spots with the pec major, it's a much larger group. But just keep in mind that the, the technique is you're across, you pin, you come across, externally rotate, back and forth. Do it about six times. You find a particular knot, spend a little extra time on it. That's what we're dealing with uh, in regards to those two, two muscles. In the neck area, let's do a little work on what's called the SCM, the sternocleidomastoid, that I'm not saying that word anymore. We're calling it the SCM. So you turn your head, the sternocleidomastoid, this is that long muscle that's coming from down in this area, the uh, uh, sternum, uh, sternoclavicular area down here, comes all the way up behind the ear to the mastoid process, sternocleidomastoid, right? So we wanna loosen this muscle up. So if you turn your head, you find the muscle that pops out. Take these two fingers, and put one finger on each side of that muscle. It's easy to find. And then clamp that muscle down. Push, push your fingers down onto the uh, collarbone here, okay? So I found the muscle and now I have it trapped. I come back to neutral. Keep those fingers down tight, like keep it trapped. Now I'm gonna tilt the opposite direction. So right now I'm on my right sternocleidomastoid muscle, okay? I've trapped it with my two fingers. I've brought it back to neutral. Now I'm tilting to the left. Go as far as you can. You feel a stretch. When you, when you feel a comfortable stretch, pause. Then I want you to look up towards the right. So I'm tilting to the left and then looking up to the right. And this is where I'm going to hang out for about 30 seconds to release that, that sternocleidomastoid, the SCM. And I'm going to do it three times. Then when you do the other side, turn your head, pop some muscle out. Take these two fingers, each side of the muscle, put those fingers firmly down onto the collarbone back to neutral. Tilt away from the muscle first. When you can't go any further, look up, holding it for 30 seconds three times, all right? That's the stuff we need to do to loosen up this area. Now let's move on to the next phase. All right, next thing we need to do is start working on getting those vertebra moving again. A lot of times when that thoracic spine starts to come over and tighten up in the wrong direction, those vertebrae get really, really kind of basically glued together. They're not moving that well. And so we need to start getting some mobility back in the thoracic spine, the upper to mid thoracic spine, okay? And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna use what's called a peanut roller, okay? These things are awesome. Everyone should have a peanut roller. If you don't, you can try to use a couple side-by-side -side tennis balls, lacrosse balls. I mean, this makes it so easy. So let me show you how we're gonna use a peanut roller to start getting some release and some set, uh, movement in the thoracic spine. I'm up on a bench, but you can just simply do this, get on the floor. Now, if you have a really bad, or, or not even a really bad, but a mild or moderate hump already, and, it, and, you, and you're kind of stuck in this position and you can't lie flat back like this, this is, these are some techniques, I would just do them up against the wall. So just get up against the wall with this peanut roller and do it from a standing position or a sitting position where you just sit back up against the wall until your thoracic spine starts to loosen up. Once it's loosening up and you feel comfortable, then go onto the floor. So don't force yourself onto the floor to try to like push your back down 
if you're if you're really locked up right now, do it standing against the wall or sitting against the wall. So I'm gonna have my knees bent. I'm on the ground. I mean, obviously I'm on a bench, but I mean, if you're on the ground, get on the ground and just put this in the upper part of your back like this. Put it down there, and then just put your weight onto the onto the peanut roller. Now. I like to just basically have my arms up like this. I move my arms around a little bit. I put, a, I, sometimes I lift my hips up a little bit, try to push a little extra pressure down there. But do whatever you need to do to make it, you know, feel some, some pressure and hang out for about 30 seconds. After about 30 seconds, we're gonna start moving the ball an inch or so down a little bit, okay? And then you're gonna hang out here for about 30 seconds. Sometimes I just stretch my arms over. Sometimes I like to put my hands behind my, my uh, head and I open up my elbows like this. It really doesn't matter. I mean, it's just you're hanging out. Sometimes they get a little pop or a crack. Absolutely fine. It feels great. And then just slowly, every, like I said, every 30 seconds, just kind of roll down about an inch or so. And again, just try to hang out, breathe, stretch, hang out. And just keep making these one inch increments down the back until you get past the shoulder blades and and that's about as far as I go I go about a couple inches past where your shoulder blades are you certainly don't want to be um, getting into the transitional part where the thoracic spine is turning into the into the lumbar spine it's not it's not even um, not even needed to do that for this type of problem we're working on that upper to mid thoracic spine so anyways Peanut roller work works awesome. It feels awesome. Something I do every day. Now we get some mobility going in that thoracic spine. We got to strengthen those muscles. Okay, here's some simple daily exercises I want you to start doing. First thing we're going to start with is regarding the, the translation of the head, the head going forward. We're going to start with what we call some chin tucks. I'm going to show you some uh, chin, chin tucks with no resistance. Then we're going to show you how you can add some resistance. So all a chin tuck is is just sitting, let the head in, um, in, uh, jut forward into this position, which might be the position you, you might be in anyways, and then just tuck the chin back and hold for a two count, thousand one, thousand two. Shoot it forward and bring it back. Three sets of 15 repetitions. When it feels comfortable, take a towel or you can take a resistance band like I have here, put it behind the head, and just straighten the arms out in front like this. So now we have some resistance. Let that head come forward. And from here, just pull the, 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 the head back. Tuck, tuck the chin. Forward, back. So slowly start to add resistance. You can use a towel. You can use different size, size, uh, sizes of resistance bands. But once again, three sets of 15 repetitions. So we're strengthening those muscles that will pull the head back into position, okay? So that's gonna help our neck position. Now, we also wanna get in, we need to start strengthening those muscles between the shoulder blades. Simple, non-weighted exercise you can do. Simply clasp your hands behind your head. Elbows are here. I want you to pull those elbows back as far as you can as you do. I want that chest to come out. That will help offset the curvature back there. So don't just pull the elbows back, pull them and get that chest up and out and hold that for a two count, thousand one, thousand two, squeeze those muscles and then relax. Pull back, chest up, thousand one, thousand two, make sure the head comes back too. So the it's three, basically three things that um, the elbows are back, the chin is actually coming back like a chin tuck and the chest goes out, thousand one, thousand two. Thousand one, thousand two. Three sets, 15 repetitions. Next up, grab a resistance band. Get it across a solid structure like this. Let's, let me show you how we're gonna do this. I'll actually stand up and do it from a standing position. What I want you to do from here, I want you to have a resistance band where you can actually first pull the shoulders back, have the head back and the shoulders back. So a nice posture. So the shoulders and the head come back. I haven't even bent my elbows yet. And then from here, once I've had the, the shoulder blades fully retracted, fully back, then I'm gonna pull the elbows all the way back. 
and squeeze. 1,001, 1,002, let it come back, then let the shoulder blades come forward. Head, go, head and shoulder blades are back, elbows come back. 1,001, 1,002, 1,001, 1,002. Three sets of 15. What I like to do on this exercise to help different areas of it is put the band at different angles. So you're gonna be doing three sets of 15. What I would recommend doing is do your first set of 15 with the, with the, the bands on a little bit on the lower side. So not only we're we kind of retracting back and up a little bit. So back and up, and then pull the elbows back. Come up a little higher with the band. We're gonna do our 15 reps from this angle now. Shoulder blade, head back, squeeze, thousand one, thousand two. You can do 15 reps that way. And then even put it up a little higher. So different angle, pull back, and then pull almost over a little bit of a downward angle. So you can do your three sets of 15 at different angles like that. That will help greatly also. So we're just working different areas, different muscles. The key is to strengthen those muscles that, that, that pull the shoulders back, that help our posture, okay? So those are all exercises you can be doing uh, daily. If you're sitting at a desk, I would actually do those exercises at least two or three times during the day. Those are exercises you can do and take breaks from your desk, push away, and run through those, those simple exercises. Okay, hope you found the information helpful. Get working on it. If this is a, a serious issue for you, you, as I mentioned, every day we're working on this stuff. If it's more preventative, three times a week, even a couple times a week helps. I do a lot of this stuff. I just find that the thoracic spine tightens on, on me as I've gotten older. It wants to tighten up, but I won't let it. So I tend to do a lot of this stuff as part of my warm up before I even work out. I do, I, I'm always on the peanut roller every day. I'm always working a lot of those exercises every day as part of my warm up. So this is just something that I do as a prevent, preventative measure so that I can maintain good mobility, so it helps me prevent injuries in the gym, and also just to help you know, keep my posture good as I get older, okay? So anyways, best of luck to everybody. Stay young, train hot. Hey, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you have to check out the private content section I am setting up on this site. It's gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna be doing live chats with just the private content people. It's a monthly um, uh, subscription, $9.99. Live, live uh, chats, questions and answers. You can ask questions about, we're gonna be covering all sorts of different topics related to health and fitness. Also, um, access to early um, uh, screenings of the videos, just lots of stuff. Check it out, you'll see the full details anyways. If you haven't done so, visit the website, ochremedhealth.com. We have all that stuff we use today in the video. Everything is in stock, so check it out. Subscribe to my channel if you take a second, I'd appreciate it. Okramed Health on YouTube. Questions about exercises or injuries, just leave me a comment in the comment section down below. I do the best I can to get back to everybody. And don't forget, Okramed Health is here to keep you fit forever.